booster has now been authorized for older teenagers. We're going to talk about the process the booster needs to go through in Oregon before the kids can actually get that shot. And we're also going to have some fun this morning, getting ready for tomorrow's big soccer match at Providence Park. Take a look at that. Is that fun? We, well, it's live, Rob. <laughs> it's live. It's fun for me in this nice warm studio to see all those people outside there this morning, hanging out, waiting to get some of the best seats in the house for Saturday's MLS Cup Final. Look at all those people. It's Isn't chilly it outside. <laughs> so Brenda Braxton is not here this morning. Maybe she's in that line. I must 100% say no. <laughs> yeah, what would you wait in line for that long? I don't know. There's, we were talking about it yeah. earlier. Not much. Just not made much. me realize I'm having fun right here yeah, in the exactly. studio right now. <laughs> Let's get you to the weather map. We have a wind advisory. These are all things that go into play tonight and then into the day tomorrow. Valley Wind Advisory for South Gust of 45 does not include areas north of the Columbia River right now. Uh, coast warning for high winds, cascades for all the snow we've been telling you is coming. Right now it's actually pretty quiet. Some scattered showers passing through that continues to be the case. So to the bus stop, I'm just going to say it's a few scattered shower Friday. Not bad. 40 out the door, 45 at noon and about 46 at 3 p.m. today. All right, Rod, we're going to get back to talking about the Timbers right now because, again, they are one more victory away from capturing their second MLS Cup championship. Yeah, and for the first time ever, we're going to do it in at home at Providence Park. Devin Haskins is outside the stadium this morning, and we've been showing you, yep, camp fans camping out for days to grab one of the best seats in the house. Devin, what's going on there this morning? Yeah, these are some dedicated people sitting out here in the freezing cold and the, the wet weather to, to get one of those best seats. Later on today, wristbands will get handed out to the thousand or to the first 1,000 people standing in line. You can see this line right now is pretty long. We just uh, did a trip around the, uh, the whole stadium. It wraps around about three quarters of the way around from uh, here on the, uh, uh, where are we at, the 18th side all the way to the other side. The 20th side, the only place I haven't seen them yet is right in front where the sign and the marquee and the uh, the statue is. Thousands, like I said, hundreds of people here around the stadium right now trying to get in line for that first thousand. A week of festivities to kick off the MLS Cup that st uh, starts tomorrow. First, there was the blessing of the victory log. Timber Joey will hopefully be slicing off several pieces during the match. One for every goal. Piner Courthouse Square yesterday, fans enjoyed posing in front of a giant replica of the MLS Cup. Check this out. Twin brothers carving an MLS Cup out of a block of wood. They will deliver it to the stadium ahead of today, uh, tomorrow's game. Oh, I'm just glad to be a part of it. It's a timber wonderland right now. Now, again, this will also be a, a huge boost for uh, local businesses, bars, restaurants, hotels, with thousands of fans coming in to celebrate the, uh, the Timbers and uh, New York City FC playing in the MLS Cup. That kicks off tomorrow at noon here at Providence Park. Again, the wristbands for the first thousand get handed out today starting at 7 a.m. Once then, <laughs> once they get them, they can go home, get warm, maybe shower. Come back again tomorrow and get in line to uh, for early entry into uh, yeah as you said some of the best seats here in the house. I'm wondering you why you brought up the shower, Devin. <laughs> Are you sensing things there live that I cannot sense here in the studio? <laughs> I figure if you're out here for a couple of days, I mean maybe you haven't showered in a couple of days. Uh, Devin, you don't get to go anywhere for a while. Devin's going to be hanging out there for the next couple of hours with us here on Sunrise. But we do have this poll question for you this morning, and we're hoping that the uh, the answer stays somewhere in this 90% ballpark this morning. We're asking a simple question: Who do you think is going to win tomorrow's big match? Your Portland Timbers or that other team from New York City? So far, we have 90% weighing in with the Timbers. Again, I'd be very surprised if it didn't stay that way. Uh, you can vote right now by going to our Twitter page. This poll is pinned to the top of the page. OHSU leaders say they're sorry and they need to do better. An eight-month outside investigation revealed several shortcomings when it comes to handling employee complaints of discrimination and harassment. KGW's Alma McCarty has a closer look for us at that investigation. OHSU leaders say they're committed to making real changes after a months long investigation with an estimated cost of $6.5 million revealed a myriad of problems with the institutional culture. The independent review by Covington and Burling, an outside firm led by former Attorney General Eric Holder, included interviews with hundreds of people to analyze OHSU's culture as it relates to harassment, misconduct, 
employee reporting and retaliation. None of the themes surprised me. Uh, again, it was disappointing that there were so many, at least of those who participated, who felt like they hadn't been adequately supported. According to the Covington Report, many believe the hospital failed to create an environment which community members feel values diversity, equity and inclusion and makes them feel welcomed and safe. The report also points to turnover and lack of leadership in human resources and a lack of support for students and employees reporting misconduct. Dr. Danny Jacobs, president of OHSU, sees the review and report as an investment. The faster we can get at these issues and address them, the better the organization, like many institutions and other active health centers, uh, there are many issues that affect the work for, workforce, and oftentimes those are cultural. Uh, and, the, and, and the experiences that some of our members have felt need to be eliminated. In our statement, you know, if there's just one person that's experienced that, that means we have work to do. Chad Paulson, a director on OHSU's board, said the report was difficult to hear, but important to accept. For those folks that were brave enough to come forward, share their lived experiences, uh, we thank them. Their, the, what they shared is going to allow us to move forward on a path to become the institution that we want to be. Covington's recommendations include clarifying misconduct policies, strengthening accountability measures, protecting employees who report issues from retaliation, and fully staffing and streamlining HR. The proof will be in the actions we take. I have every confidence that executive leadership will work uh, aggressively uh, uh, and intently to address the recommendations. Alma McCarty, KGW News. One more note to this story. OHSU released the full 51-page report online saying that's part of their effort to be more transparent. You can find it right now at KGW.com. All right, let's get to the latest with COVID because the CDC and FDA has authorized the Pfizer booster shot for 16 and 17 year olds now. Previously, it's been only 18 and up. There is still an approval process that needs to happen in Oregon before those kids can get their booster. And that includes the governor and the Oregon Health Authority giving the go ahead. So once that happens, then they can get the shot as long as they had their initial vaccinations at least six months ago. New data is showing that vaccine effectiveness is really waning, which is why doctors are urging boosters. Health officials saying it's going to strengthen protection against Omicron and maybe any other variants that come along. We talked with a pediatrician at Selwood Medical Clinic about it in Portland. I would absolutely get your child boosted against um, COVID-19 COVID and continue the series in. Either start it if you have not yet. Um, again, we found it very safe and effective. Um, and if you have, then to get this, this next step. Officials tell us Oregon could green light the boosters very soon. We have an online article with links to vaccine websites for Oregon and Washington, and you can use it to find appointments for booster shots. So all you have to do is text the word booster to 503-226-5088. We will text you back that link to your phone. Well, the city of Portland's plan for the sanctioned homeless villages you've been hearing about includes a promise for 24-7 support services at those villages. They're going to help those who also have addiction and mental health problems transition into housing. So far, Commissioner Dan Ryan's office has announced three sites for the villages. They're working on a fourth location. Behavioral health support is critical to this success, but providing those services is pretty hard. According to Oregon Recovers, the state ranks near the bottom in the country when it comes to access to addiction treatment. There's also a shortage of qualified health staff. The director of that statewide coalition, Mike Marshall, is 13 years in recovery from meth and alcohol himself. And in this week's public affairs show, Straight Talk, he said there's no leadership in the state to coordinate services. There's no good dialogue going on in, that I know of to come up with an evidence-based response to that. And it's a reflection, again, to my earlier point, that we don't have a statewide um, coordinated effort and we don't have someone in charge. Governor Brown needs to appoint a recovery czar. Marshall joined Oregon State Rep Tana Sanchez and Commissioner Dan Ryan as part of Straight Talks panel discussing behavioral health in Oregon and the latest on Ryan's plans for these villages. You can watch the whole thing tonight at 7 o'clock here on KGW.
Again, Rob, that's tonight here on KGW. Tomorrow, of course, around the corner from our station, big soccer match. Yes. I know uh, tomorrow's forecast is a big part of your story this morning. Yeah, now the heaviest rain rates tomorrow could be over by noon, and that's about the time the match gets going, I believe. Is that right, Mr. Carney? Yeah. Exactly right, 12 o'clock straight up, okay. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm just showing you this map to death, all right? Valley Wind Advisory, this is for overnight tonight into tomorrow. This does not include Clark County right now. It doesn't mean that it won't. So south winds could spike up to about 45. When that happens, sometimes you get spotty trees uh, down and, and you get a spotty power outage, but overall, just kind of a blustery day. Coast wind warning, 55 to 70. That's kind of typical stuff for you folks. Cascades winter storm, biggest of the year so far, eight or the season, I should say, 18 to 30 inches uh, coming down. Again, all this revs up tonight. That's a well plowed but snow covered Highway 26 up in the Cascades. Uh, it's a much calmer uh, travel scenario right now than it was 24 hours ago going up over the mountains. You can see clean pavement over the sunset uh, highway into the coast range, 33 degrees. There's a little bit of snow still setting roadside. Today's pretty quiet. There will be some scattered showers around, which is what radar shows right now. But overall, much more dry time today than wet as you're out and about. Temperatures aren't bad. 42 in Portland right now. We have uh, freezing temps, of course, east of the Cascades. Not everywhere. Pendleton's setting at 37. Here's future cast. A few scattered showers around this morning. Same thing at 6 p.m. Anywhere from 10 to midnight tonight, we think, is when this uh, wall of steady rain arrives. And just look at this. This is just pounding stuff. Some of the forecast miles go as much as an inch and a half just for the Rose City. Uh, here we are at noon tomorrow. Now, the heaviest of the rain starts to work out of here, but it could easily be raining somewhat steadily much of the afternoon hours of tomorrow. So we think that's coming. I'm trying to click my map to get to the seven day. Is it not going to go? Oh, here it comes real quick. Take a look. They'll hold that until they don't let you look at it anymore. Then they'll go back to Drew and Nina. There it is. <laughs> there it is, Rod. And there it goes because we're moving on here, talking about what's coming up in our next segment here on Sunrise. For starters, we're talking about those small earthquakes that continue to happen off the Oregon coast. Experts are hoping those latest swarms of quakes have you thinking about what you need to do to prepare for the big one. But before we get to that story, we have this one. You know about Apple's AirTags. They're a popular way to keep track of your stuff, but our Verify team is looking into claims that they're also being used to track you without your knowledge. That story is right after this quick break.